Ask Reddit, what's the worst thing to wake up to? Part 1. Someone yelling at you, it can ruin a whole day. I worked with a kid who experienced this often. He would come to school out of sorts and anxious. Little things would set him off at school and he would lash out. He would be punished, labeled a bad kid, sent home to this anxiety-inducing household again with parents who were angry at him. Poor kid was prepared to fight or fly most of the day. And of course, with all of that going on, he was learning nothing and getting behind in his class, which made him more anxious because he didn't want to look stupid. A call from work wondering where I've been all morning. That pit in your stomach when you wake up, look at your phone and see you're hours late for work. From ready to pass back out to instant anxiety fueled adrenaline in 0.2 seconds. And then you realize it's your day off. But you're already wide awake and there's no way you're getting back to sleep. A tornado alarm. This is so scary. Especially at 3 a.m. while you're in a tent and the nearest tornado shelter is a 10 minute walk through the woods in a thunderstorm. This exact scenario happened with me as well. Police. I woke up to police chasing a guy through our yard. He tripped over the bikes I had leaning against the house right where my bedroom is. That's the only reason the cops got him. There was so much yelling and threats to shoot until finally the guy cooperated. That was like Jan the second. The same thing happened to me except the dude being followed by the cops was my underage brother who stole my grandma's truck and freaked when police tried to pull him over for going too slow. He crashed into the house. Thank God I was getting a cup of water at 2am otherwise I'd be crushed by the caving in the wall. The end of that dream where you really need a pee and start to feel the satisfaction of warming release. I had a dream once that I had to pee bad. And so I went into the bathroom in my dream and saw a urinal. So I was like, let's go. Anyways, I started peeing and it's just a waterfall of piss. Like, have you ever bought a really big drink and just drank it all in an hour and then had to pee? And you're peeing so much that you have to stop the full stream for a second so that you can full stream again. That's exactly how it was. But it was just never ending. This kept going for what felt like 15 minutes until I woke up and thankfully I hadn't pissed in the bed. I don't know how I was able to hold it in through peeing so much in my dreams, but it was a relief. Your dog gagging and about to throw up in the middle of the night, then hearing him eating it 15 seconds later. Sounds like the problem solved itself. But alas, I have no coins left to give. Sigh. Hearing a throwing up noise. I was probably in the fourth grade at the time, and I was staying the night at my friend's house sleepover. I remember being super excited as her mom went all out and got us junk food to pig out on and movies to rent. We ate a ton of peanut M&Ms. I went to bed, and I woke up to the noise first, and then the smell hit me. Peanuts, chocolate, Doritos, and the vomit smell. She had one of those day beds, and I was on the pullout at the bottom. I do not know how she missed me, or how I didn't step in any of it on my way out of the room to get to her mom. There was a spot at the top of my head, and the bottom of my feet, and all over her bed. Her mom asked me, do you want to go home? Um, yes, I'll call my mom. Took me a long time to eat peanut M&Ms. Started 2020 to that sound, cat vomited on our bed. I knew it wasn't a good omen for the year. I got woken up by my dad early in the morning to inform me that my mother had passed away in the room across the hall from me. The worst part was that she was only sleeping there to look after a pup that was recently born from the two dogs we had at the time. Otherwise, my dad might have woken up and been able to do something about it. The pup ended up crying late at night before or during her heart failure that I ended up passing off, as it's not really that uncommon. But it really makes me question if I could have done something or not to help her before it happened. I think about it regularly. Calling work and breaking down to my PO's boss wasn't great either. But hey, bad day. Sorry for your loss. Stay strong. I was babysitting my niece one time when she was about four. I packed her off to bed and went to watch a movie on the couch where I promptly dozed off. Only to be woken a few hours later in complete darkness. Having no idea where I was and with a tiny clammy little demon hand grabbing at my ankle. I've never been awake faster in my life. 
only to be greeted by a very confused child who just wanted a story and who no one had seen fit to tell me could get over the baby gate like a damn ninja. We don't tell her mother about the time Aunt Hazel almost kicked her darling daughter through a window. Mine is very similar, but also the opposite. When I was 18, I would regularly visit my sister, who lives about two hours away. I would usually stay for the weekend, babysit my infant niece, and they could have a chance to go out. This particular time, I dozed off on the couch. I woke up in a blur around midnight, and I realized I didn't have the baby monitor. I went upstairs and saw the baby's door was open. I tiptoe in, and the crib is empty. I full-on panic, ran around yelling, checking all the rooms and doors, all still locked. I find my phone and there's a text from my sister. Dog meds are in the window by the sink. One half pill AM. Finally remembered that I had come that weekend to take care of their dog, while they, baby included, went to Ohio. I have never been so relieved in my entire life. Your house burning down? Had this happen once when I was in middle school. It wasn't burning down completely, but the bathroom caught fire. I had to scramble out of bed and grab the super stubborn dog and get out fast. Waking up in an ice bath with a missing kidney and blood all over the place. Uh, don't want to know how you thought of this one. Once I woke up to find my dog had diarrhea everywhere. Large puddles on the floor and also in between the side of my bed and the wall. It was completely inside the outlet. I literally had to shut off the electricity and rewire a new outlet that day. Sunlight I work the early morning shift and I'm already driving to work before the sun even comes up. A couple of times my phone has ended up under my pillow and I've missed my alarm only to wake up to the sun glaring in my eyes. That sudden feeling of messing up always sucks. Yeah, I remember those days of waking up before dawn. If I woke up to sunlight, then I immediately knew I messed up and with a jolt of energy, hop out of the bed. Fever, sore throat, shortness of breath. Just go back to sleep. 2020 is all but a dream. It genuinely feels like everything since the first week of January 2016 has been what you'd get from someone trying to run an improv show in an asylum that's also in fire. Hey, you, you're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that imperial ambush, same as us, and that thief over there. Damn you, Stormcloaks! Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been looking for you, I could have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. You there? You and me, we shouldn't be here. It's these Stormcloaks the Empire wants. We're all brothers and sisters and binds now, thief. Shut her back there. And what's wrong with him, huh? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Ulfric Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You're the leader of the rebellion. But if they've captured you, where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going, but Sodden Guard waits. No, this can't be happening. This isn't happening. Hey, what village are you from, horse thief? And why do you care? And Nord's last thoughts should be of home. Rorikstead. I'm... I'm from Rorikstead. An alarm. Not just any alarm, the iPhone alarm. No, really any alarm. Even a song you like only takes around a week to become miserable. My mom woke me up because my grandmother passed away. This. Waking up to hear someone has died, is dying or is deathly ill, just sinks your day from the start. I'm so sorry for your losses. A few years ago, I was awoken at probably 5 a.m. The sun was just starting to appear by the most rancid stench I have ever experienced. It was so rank that it woke me up out of a sound sleep. I am unwakeable. I will silence alarms in my sleep. I have slept through hurricanes, but this stench slapped me in the face so hard that I was up and ready to fight it at the first grasp of consciousness my body had. At first, I thought it was some serious ass dog poop, but my bedroom door was still shut and it would be super weird since my dog doesn't have a history of pooping in the house. So I go on a manhunt for the source of this awful aroma and I absolutely cannot figure it out. Nothing on the floor, under the bed, on the bed, in the closet, in any piece of furniture, etc. I open the window 
partially to let in some fresh air and partially to see if it's coming from outside. Then I walk past my python's enclosure one more time and realize that it is the epicenter of this horrific nightmare fume. I couldn't see much through the barely sunlit room, so I flipped the light switch on to see the side of her enclosure covered in a dried, crusty liquid and some bits of unidentifiable chunks. Absolutely disgusted, I have no choice but to get closer and inspect this hazmat crime scene to find out what happened and to see if she was still okay. She was fine, but coiled up at the opposite end of her enclosure with her head poking up at me, pleading, begging. Please, please human, kill me. She had escaped the day before and had been fed the day before that. If you don't know much about caring for snakes, you have to let them rest and digest about 72 hours after eating, otherwise they can and most likely will vomit. Do you know what snake vomit looks like? It's just a whole animal with their head half partially dissolved in acid, depending on how long it was inside the snake. In this case, I looked over and saw a rat's ass from the hip bones down, organs spilled everywhere and goo covering every inch of the enclosure on that side. She had decided to puke the rat's ass directly onto her heat rock, where some of it had been deflected everywhere and the rest had been actively baking while I'd been sleeping. The sight, coupled with the scent, made me lose it. I vomited all over the floor. I go and grab some cleaning supplies, toss her into the bin and soak a t-shirt in perfume to tie around my mouth and nose while I attack this revolting pukepocalypse. As I've got my head in her enclosure, straining to hold my breath and trying to squint as much as possible so I don't have to see as much, I turn to throw another wad of dirty paper towels into the bag I had opened on the floor behind me to see my dog snacking on them. I vomited again. Overall, it took me an hour to get the enclosure clean. I had to give her a half hour soak but babysit her while trying not to fall asleep so she didn't try to submerge her head in dawn. I had to brush my dog's teeth and the smell didn't leave my room for a week. Even with my windows open, three wallflowers and fan going 24-7.